present School is Now in Session. Welcome to Homeschool Podcast. Homeschool. The Homeschool Podcast. Why? Because it was homeschool. It's time to document the journey. Hello and welcome back to Homeschool Podcast. I am really excited to do a podcast with you guys today. And uh, I'm not just saying that. I've, I've genuinely been looking forward to this because I got some things on my mind that I think it's important that I share with you. So uh, it's just me doing a solo episode with no guest and no co-host. So um, today we are going to talk about the power of the mind or power of thoughts, if you will, is uh, is a subject of today. So stick around. It's going to get interesting. Right up front, I want to open up with saying, uh, if you hear some weird sound, I apologize. I got a little fan on me. It is summer over here in Southern California in full effect. We had uh, 90, 95 today. Now, that could mean a lot of different things depending on where you're listening to this. Some parts of the country, 90s is humid. 90s is like they're thankful for it. But out here in Southern California, it's just hot. It's just I live in the valley of Los Angeles. It's just hot, okay? And I'm in here in my podcast studio, AK gym, AK garage, AKA my kayak and freaking storage. And it's like dead air, 120 in here, hard to breathe in here. Uh, Part of the reason I had to get a 24-hour fitness membership recently, because it's like during the summer, it's like, unbearable to work out in here but anyway excuse the fan it is a must it's necessary i would like to invite everybody to my shows i have coming up and here's what i got for you guys i got coming up uh uh, plano texas i believe uh, let's just say dallas let's just call it dallas texas if you live in dallas texas or you're familiar with the area it's like a suburbs of dallas i'm doing the house of comedy it's uh it's a brand new comedy club, you guys. The House of Comedy owns, like, it's a chain of comedy clubs. They got, like, four clubs in, in the United States, two in Canada. I've done almost all their clubs, but they just opened one, I think, like, uh, in 2021, late 2021, maybe early 2022, in uh, in Plano, Texas. Um, so I'm excited, man. They asked me to go out there. They've invited me to headline, and I'm inviting you to come see me, so... If you're anywhere in the area, I'd love to have you guys come out. you got a lot of opportunities to see me. I am there on July 28th through July 31st. So that is a uh, Thursday through Sunday. And the Friday, Saturday have two shows, an early and a late. So a lot of opportunities to see me. And that's also a lot of seats to fill. So if you guys can come out, it'd be great to meet you in person. I've been talking a lot of shit in your ears for years. And if you haven't been listening to this podcast for years, then come get to know me. Come say hi. I'm going to drop some fucking knowledge. I'm going to drop some fucking hammer. I'm going to whatever, whatever you can think of, I'm dropping it. And I got old material that I've improved. I've got new material that hit and I'm excited. You guys, besides that, you can come see me in uh, San Francisco, August 5th and 6th. I'm a part of the tinfoil hat tour there. It's at Cobb's comedy club. I'm going to be uh, the early shows I'm featuring for Sam Tripoli and the late shows. I'm hosting the tinfoil hat podcast with uh, with Sam Tripoli and uh, Eddie, Eddie, uh, Eddie Bravo and then XG is on it. So uh, if you're in San Francisco, that's only the fifth and sixth. not too many options there. So you better get your tickets. Uh, I got a bunch of dates, you guys. All tickets are available at AugustinoComedian.com. Thank you for your patience. Let's get started in this episode. I know that Listen, guys, I signed with iHeart recently, um, so I know that they kind of add in their own, I think they're like 30 seconds long, and sometimes they're like back-to-back ads. They might be in the front of the podcast, they might show up in the middle of the podcast, but they're short, and I know that uh, those are in there, so I apologize if you went from like ads to hearing my comedy dates, because it's a lot of it's a lot of promotion up front when we want to get to the meat and potatoes, which is what I'm about to do right now. All right. So today, as I said in the beginning, we're going to be talking about the power of the mind. And I'm going to open this week's episode by telling you about what happened to me uh, early last week. So around this time last week, actually, I want to say Tuesday, 
I had my wallet get stolen. All right, you guys. So yeah, fucking sucks, man. Fucking sucks. I, I mean, it's one thing to lose a card. It's, you know, a credit card. You can just call it up and cancel it. Things like that. But when you lose your wallet, you lose a lot of things at once. I lost my driver's license, several credit cards, my debit card, uh, my Venmo card, which apparently Venmo won't send me out a new card. I have no idea fucking why. The only thing they let you do is cancel or at least put a hold on so nobody can use your card. At least you do that in the app. But as far as getting a new one, still haven't figured that one out. So anybody listening at Venmo, let me know. Um, they had $300 cash they got for me. Normally, I don't even walk around with cash, you know, but this is the fucking one week I had cash. I didn't have a chance to go deposit it yet. Um, as a matter of fact, I, I kind of held on to it on purpose because I was out of town and I pay my nephew to uh, watch my dog when I go on the road. So, or, or sometimes I pay my friend or something like that. I throw, you know, I throw him a little money. And I remember I, I held on to that cash on purpose. Anyway, back to the, back to the whole point here. And I know, I know it was stolen. I, I, I'm going to tell you how it got stolen. So I know it was stolen and I know exactly what happened. It was Tuesday between 9.50 and let's say 12.30 for sure. So I pull into a parking lot. I had just come from the gym. So I got these shorts on that my wallet just doesn't fit in the pocket. So I'm sitting there with the wallet in my cup holder of my car. And I pull into the parking lot. I got to run into the building. I got a meeting. And halfway through the parking lot, I stop and I go, shit, I just left my my wallet sitting there in the cup holder. And I go, I better not leave it there. Somebody's going to see it, break my window, steal the wallet. So I make a conscientious point to walk back. I do open my car door, grab my wallet, close the car door, lock the car door, Continued into my meeting, all right? I'm in there a few hours talking to people, what have you. I've got about 12.30, I get a text message from one of my one of my credit card companies telling me, like, is this you? Somebody was trying to use charge like $270 at Target. And I'm like, this is not me. I'm not a Target. I'm not a big Target shopper in general. I don't really go there. And uh, I, so I said, no. And then I go, what if the text was the scam? So... I, uh, I, I, I go to grab my wallet. I go, let's just see if that's even the last four digits of my car. This could be a fucking scam text before I reply to it. And then all of a sudden I got a virus or something. I don't know. But then I go look for my wallet and it's not there. And I go, what do you mean? It's not there. I remember specifically going back to the car, grabbing it so I can have it with me right now. I'm looking in my backpack with near my laptop. I'm like, I, so what happened was when I got it from the car, I must've dropped it walking back in because maybe it fell out of my stupid gym short pockets. So that's probably what happened. And uh, between like, and that was at like 10 o'clock in the morning. So between 10 a.m. I got there, I must have dropped it by 1230. Somebody was trying to use it. And uh, so I replied, no, it wasn't me. I, I even looked up the Target store number and it was down the street from where it was. So somebody found it, ran a Target, tried to charge it. And uh, so I put, no, it's not me. So it ended up declining on them. Then I call my credit card. They tell me that they try to use it at a nearby gas station too. It ended up declining on them. So good news is, is nobody was able to use any of my cards. I was able to turn, can, cancel all my cards, order all new ones. It just sucks though, you know? Um, and I was able to, uh, I was able to do all that, but it just sucks. They got 300 cash off me. Uh, plus the wallet itself was a gift for my wife. It wasn't a it wasn't like Louis Vuitton or anything, but it wasn't a cheap wallet. You know, I, I really like the style. I haven't seen one of those in a while. Um, anyway, so so that's what happened to me. Now, here's the kicker. Here's where I want you guys to pay attention the most, all right? That morning, I thought to myself, wouldn't it suck if my wallet got stolen? I thought it that morning, guys, that Tuesday, last Tuesday, which I believe, I don't know what the fuck date it was. It was like the fucking 12th or something. Because uh, I was sitting there washing dishes. It was early in the morning. I woke up early. I took my dog for a long walk, like a mile. Then I came back and I fed him. And then I was washing dishes. 
when I was washing dishes. No, sorry, I'm lying to you. I went to the gym, like I had told you. That's why I was wearing the shorts. So I went to the gym, came back, fed the dog, and then I was sitting there doing dishes. And I go, I remember saying to myself, I left, I left my wallet in the cup holder of the car while I was sitting there doing dishes. And I thought to myself, like, I don't want to lose my fucking wallet because I was at the gym and I left my wallet in the car. And I go, like, fuck, I better not leave it out there. I parked out, out front on the street to Main Street. So this is what I'm saying to myself. And I thought to myself, this is early in the morning before before I had the other thought about parking in my meeting lot. This is hours earlier. Sitting there washing dishes and I go like, fuck, I would hate to lose my wallet. I got all that cash in there because I rarely keep cash in there. And I go, you know, and then I, I remember specifically thinking this thought out loud. I thought to myself, you know what? The worst part about losing your wallet, I think, would be having to get a new driver's license, going down to the DMV and doing that whole thing. Like I thought to myself, that would be a pain in the ass. And I literally said to myself, I'd rather pay $300 to not have to go to the DMV. I literally thought that to myself when I was in my little, you know, days while doing dishes. Fast forward to the story I just told you. I go to the meeting, went back for my wallet in the car, grabbed it, walked to the meeting. Somewhere along the lines, I must have dropped it. Someone try to use it. Get the text. Is this you? No, it's not me. Okay. Uh, ordered all new cards. And I was even or able to order my driver's license online without actually having to go to the DMV because I had recently renewed my driver li driver's license. So I guess it was like a thing you can do. You just pay the $31 and they'll just mail you a new one. They already got the newest one on file. So I was like, oh, okay. So I didn't even have to do that. So now I want my $300 back. <laughs> But what the point is, I'm trying to tell you guys, is I was thinking to myself, the power of the mind and the power that you don't realize you have with your thoughts. Now, I'm not saying that because I thought it, it happened. I'm not saying that everything I think will happen. But I do believe that whatever kind of energy you put in the universe, like they, like, you know, power of the tongues is talked about a lot. And I also believe in that. Whatever you're speaking into the universe is a powerful thing. And I also believe that whatever you're thinking into the universe can also be a powerful thing. All right. So that's what happened. I was thinking to myself, what if my wallet got stolen several hours later, a couple hours later, it fucking got stolen. Now, uh, needless to say, this was a very bad day for me, right? This was... Uh, I was very, very, very upset. It was, it was a big hassle. I'm, I'm sitting there upset about $300 cash I lost. Guys, $300 is a lot of money for me. I'll sit here thinking like, oh, you're touring comic, guys. It is it is a, a, a bought, like from the ground up business I do. You know, when you see me headlining a club, sure. A lot of comics wish they were doing that. And, you know, certain clubs, this one I'm doing in Texas, it's good money. You know, this club takes care of you, the, the house of comedy, you're solid people. They pay you what you're worth. They give you a place to stay, a nice hotel. So it, it's, uh, yes, there's its perks, but I am a working, struggling comic, okay? $300 is a lot of fucking money to me. That is, like, right now, to go jump on a plane to go, let's see, where do I got to go? I got to go to fucking, like, uh, Arkansas soon. Okay, that's like five hundred, six hundred dollars. So three hundred dollars to me is like it's my livelihood. So I'm really pissed off about that. I'm pissed off about all my credit cards I got to reorder. I go over to Chase and I'm like, I need to cancel this card and I need to uh, you know order a new debit card. And Chase Bank is telling me we can't do that until unless you give us an ID. And I'm like, I ain't got no ID because it was in my fucking wallet that also got stolen. And I'm like, do you get a passport? I go, yeah, I got a passport. I got a passport sitting at home in my fucking safe. That's where my passport is. I think I'm walking around my passport. Is it an emergency? We got to cancel this car before this guy who's already tried to, to use it uses it, okay? So, um, by the way, I said this guy. I don't know who it is. It could be a girl, but things like this, you just assume it's a dude. I don't know why. Uh, nobody calls you on being sex sexist when you're saying the man is the wrong one. They only call you on being sexist when you say the woman, assuming things about women. But if you assume things about guys, 
this is a this this is a this is probably a straight toxic male that stole my wallet okay so um we got to cancel this debit card so then now they want you to go in the app that's the only way you can do it so i go in the app and i got it, it was just a hassle oh not to mention i just got my tsa pre-check because i fly a lot and i just got that whole thing that was in my wallet I had to order all new shit just to pay in the ass lost money and i was just it was it was just a bad day you guys okay now i'm telling you about the power of the mind and the power of thought so <clears throat> I'm driving along and I tell myself, this is the same day I lost the wallet, right? And I'm sitting there and I'm listening to the Tinfoil Hat podcast, which uh, I'm friends with Sam Tripoli. He throws me a lot of work on the road. And you know what, guys? I, I, uh, I, I enjoy working with him. He's one of the few guys I'll still agree to open for. And I like his podcast in general. Okay. I like the conspiracy theories and it's not all conspiracy theories. I don't even like that word. It's just people with the, you know, a lot of them with facts, a lot more facts than people that fact check. And it's just an entertaining show. So I all, I'm, I'm a friend of his and I'm also a fan of the show. So I'm driving along and I'm listening to the Tim Foyle hat podcast. And who do I see? I'm there in my car. I stop at a red light and I look up. And I see fucking Sam Tripoli. As I'm listening to his podcast, I see him standing there across the street. Now, let me back up <clears throat> a couple of minutes. When I put on his podcast, he was uh, he was plugging his dates. He was uh, saying, hey, guys, you know, like, like I do in the beginning of my show. Here's where I'm going to be. Go buy tickets. And I was listening to the show, and I heard him say he's going to be in San Francisco with Eddie Bravo and all this stuff. And I remember thinking to myself while I was listening to that. I haven't been to San Francisco in years to do a, a show. I used to do, and then I go, he's doing Cobbs. I actually never got to do that comedy club. When I went to San Francisco, I would do the punchline because I used to feature for Joey, for, for Joey Diaz. So he took me to the punchline. I had great experiences there. And then besides that, I did this other place. It used to be called the Purple Onion. But when I did it, it was called something else. I forget, like Doc's fish house or something it's like a smaller room in the basement really cool room really cool. if you ever watched zach galifianakis special live from the purple onion in san francisco um that's where it was but it just had a new name when i did it just a really cool little room and so i used to perform there and i and you know i love the seafood and i haven't been back since i'm full pescatarian and i just haven't been back in a while and i thought to myself i would love to play san francisco again and I thought, I never got to do the Cobbs Club. I heard a lot about it. I would love to do it. And I thought, I would love to be on a road gig with Tripoli and Eddie Bravo at the same time. The three of us get along really well. We have great chats. Um, and then I look up, and there's Tripoli standing across the street. I don't know. He was, he was putting something in his car. He was at the park. He was just parked there. And I just was at a red light. And I yell across the street. And I say, yo, Tripoli. You know, he, he looks over at me. And he's like, oh, hey, what's up, dude? And he goes, uh, hey, are you available on the 5th and 6th? He's yelling this across the street. And I said, yeah. And he's like, cool, call me, call me. You could do San Francisco with me. Just call me. And that's how that fucking happened. And I and the light turned green. I drove off. And then when I got where I was going, I called him and we settled it. And now I'm in. Okay. Now, mind you, that this same day, my wallet got stolen and everything. And every time I think about it, I'm getting pissed. Every time I think about that $300, I'm getting pissed, okay? And all the hassle I had all day, everything, I'm just getting pissed about it. But by the end of the day, I was trying to calm myself down, okay? And I was thinking on the bright side of things. And I thought to myself, you know... I thought to myself many things. I was trying to put myself in the other person's shoes because what they did is fucked up, you know, uh, because they obviously found the wallet, ran to try to use the credit card at Target right away, right? So, I mean, I've also been in in a position where I've been down on my luck, like worse like than I've ever been. I've been in a position where like overdrawn by several hundred dollars, rent is due you know no gas in my car had to fucking like borrow five dollars to put gas to make it to the gig like i've been in a position like that and then i found 
like a hundred dollars. I never found it in someone's wallet, but I found a hundred dollars. And I would like to think that if I found a wallet, I know hundred percent me, the me right now would find the person and get it back to them. Like, I mean, I, I did find a credit card once I looked up the name. I found the guy on Facebook, you know, and, and it, yo, I found your card. I didn't go use it, but I'm trying to think back in my shoes when I was like down on my luck, like I'm praying for a miracle. For all I know, this guy was was praying, please, God, I all he could use is $300. All he could use. And then all of a sudden, after he prayed, he looked down and saw my wallet. These are the things I'm telling myself to try to be more positive about it. But if I was in his shoes, like, or if I was in my own shoes back in the day when I was really down on my luck, I like I would like to think that I would still give the find the rightful owner but maybe not maybe i would have opened it seen if there was any cash taken the cash and left the wallet there so when they come back or taken the cash and found the person it belonged to and said hey i found your wallet and if they go hey where's the cash i'll be like i don't know what you're talking about i just, I just found a dude on the street like i might have done that shit i don't know but uh i mean i, rem I remember being like dirt broke one year and and I couldn't afford a a Christmas tree. And I was and I found one on the street. It was just like a beautiful fucking Christmas tree. It was just on the street. The only thing I could think of is like maybe somebody got it and it fell off the roof of their car. But then it would have had some ropes and stuff. So I don't know how they tied it up. But it was like a brand new, beautiful, fresh off the lot Christmas tree. I found it and I fucking took it home and that was my tree. It was a beautiful tree. Now, maybe that was fucked up. Maybe the person would have driven back eventually when they got where they were going and found out that their tree was gone. I don't know, but it would sit in there for a while. But then again, I also had my Christmas tree fucking stolen out of the back of my pickup truck one year when I was young. And I thought to myself, well, maybe a family has a Christmas tree this year. You know, they must have been that, that desperate. And I remembered that and I thought to myself, I need to start thinking positive like that. I don't know the situation they were in. You know, but they ended up taking the whole fucking wallet. They didn't even leave the wallet. They didn't think, well, this guy's going to have to get new cars. This guy's going to have to get a new driver's license. Look at all this shit. I had, had little post-it notes with joke ideas I stuffed in there. I had my fucking, my little uh, Poke Bowl coupon punch. You know, when you go to a place and they give you a punch. And when you get, you know, however many punches, they give you the, the next one free. I was like one punch away from a free Poke Bowl. So like, you know what I mean? It's just a hassle. It's just like you could have left it for someone to find it and just taken the cash. But no, they ran. So I try, I, I try to think that like, you know, what goes around comes around, you know, the whole karma thing, something's going to happen. But most of all, I don't necessarily wish any bad on anybody. It was a fucked up thing to do, but I've been down before. And maybe that's what happened, you know. Um, so now I'm trying to think positively and I go, well, you know what? I lost 300 plus 31 for the driver's license. Plus I, uh, I I dropped another like 80 bucks to order a brand new wallet. And I, and yeah, sure. Could I get a cheaper wallet? Of course, of course I can get a cheaper wallet. But if you know anything about me, uh, I don't eat fucking meat. So what kind of a hypocrite would I be walking around with a leather wallet? And I also don't buy anything that's fucking made in China. I'm not racist against Chinese people. I love Chinese people. I fucking love Asian people. I, I boycott things made in China specifically because of their, their child labor laws. I actually supporting Chinese people by doing that. I don't want no fucking illegal shit. China fucking sends drugs over here. They send fucking viruses over here. Their government is fucking awful. I don't buy nothing made in China. So do you know how hard it is to find shit that's not made in China and is vegan? So I got a, this place. I found this place. It's made in Italy. Gosh, I I mean, it, it's made in Italy with, with vegan leather, which is like cactus and other plant life stuff, all from Italy, and uh, hand stitched and handmade in Italy. And I found other stuff, guys. They got boot, men's boots, jackets, all belts, all kind. I'm like, oh shit! I'm glad I found this place. So I ordered myself a brand new wallet and a <clears throat> and a laptop case, little sleeve, which I needed for my new laptop anyway to protect it. But anyway, back to the story. I'm excited about the new made in Italy vegan fucking wallet. All right. 
but yeah, I had, you know, all this money I spent and lost, I lost $300 that got stolen from me, but I was thinking like, I got to think positively. I got to, you know, I'll make it up. I'll make it up somewhere, you know? Um, and right as I'm saying that guys, I'm up late, by the way, I, I stopped drinking a bunch. I was from since the beginning of the pandemic until like earlier this year, I was drinking every fucking day. And then earlier this year, I was noticing that it was, I, it was a problem and I was gaining weight and I would try not to drink every day and I would only make it like one day. And then I was still drinking the other six days. It was very, very difficult. But lately, the last six weeks, I have uh, got myself into a class that's three days a week and it's early. And it makes me not drink the night before or eat junk or eat late because when I wake up, I don't want to feel hungover, cloudy, groggy. I want to be, you know, I don't want to be out there working out outside in the sun and feel like I'm going to throw up. Like I just wanted to be in my best condition to handle the class properly. So I have been slowing down and drinking a lot. But this particular night, what a day I had, wallet stolen, all that shit. And I'm sitting there. I was up late and I was a little drunk. I was by myself. My wife was out of town, by the way, which is why I was, you know, feeding a dog, doing the dishes and doing everything and blah, 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 blah after the gym. My wife was out of town. I go, you know what? I'm having some cocktails. I sat at home with the dog and I was sitting there. Boom, one, two, three, four gin and tonics. I'm just sitting there drinking. And I'm, you know, trying to calm myself down. I'm thinking those positive thoughts. And right when I was thinking that, guys, must have been 1230 at night after midnight, I get a text message from the owner of the comedy club. And she goes, hey, you available July 28th through 31st to do my new Texas club? I said, fuck yeah. And guys... Right when I thought that is when I got the text, how I have to think positive and I'll make the money back. And I'll probably make, I'm not even going to tell you an exact percentage, but I mean, I'll make the money back and then some with this gig, especially at, I mean, the $300 I lost, that's how much it cost me to fly to this gig. Okay. So yeah, it would have been nice to have the $300 to fly to the gig, but you know what? the money I make headlining a week at a comedy club makes up way more than that. Way more than that. Now I'm not saying I'm ready to go fucking buy a house. No guys, relax. It's under probably under two grand profit. All right. Maybe after I buy the airline ticket, it's like, I'll probably come home with $1,500. If you factor in, you know, food and stuff, everything over there, Ubers and all that stuff. I'll probably come home with $1,300. So I lost $300 because someone stole it from me. I got like a thousand back, let's just say. All right. So the point is, is the power of the mind and the power of your thoughts can be as powerful as the tongue that you speak into the universe. So I was thinking to myself, what if someone stole my wallet and then someone stole my wallet that day? Do I, do I have powers? That's not what I'm saying. All of us have this power we're all energy and i'm telling you to put positivity into the universe because it works the other way around too i thought to myself someone could steal my wallet and someone stole my wallet but it works the other way around too think positive things i thought to myself i want to do this gig with tripoli there was tripoli standing there and he gave me that fucking gig that i was just thinking about and then i wanted to make money back that i lost boom the comedy club fucking booked me Put positive energy, positive thoughts, speak positive things. Don't think to yourself, and guys, I'm a stand-up. I'm a stand-up comic. Trust me, I know it's hard to not think to yourself that you're doing bad or that it's over. You'll never work again. Or how did this person get more bookings than you? And how are they doing better? Their Instagram reel got more views than mine did. Whatever it is, guys, I know it's hard not to, but don't pay attention to that shit. Speak positive things into the universe. This thing is funny. I'm going to put it out there and people are going to love this. Speak positive things. I'm not saying to live a, a false life, a facade, and just be like, oh, everything's great when it's not. No, a real fucking artist fails and learns from the failure and succeeds and keeps going and keeps going. A poser pretends that they never failed to begin with. 
and they'll just go, oh, yeah, everything's great. I'm going to be a movie star one day. No, guys, no. All right. Telling you to speak positivity into the universe and have the same thoughts. When I watch a movie, I always think to myself, like, I'm one of the characters, not even one of the characters, like, I'm an actor who played that character. And I thought to myself that, you know, only a handful of people must do this. When I was young, I only I go, and those are the people who are the movie stars today. You know, when they were young, they always sat there and, and thought, I would play that person. That's and, and throughout the entire movie, you pictured you playing them. But you know what, guys? As I got older, I found out that fucking almost everybody does that. But you know what I noticed about me? I never made myself the star of the movie. Whenever I'm watching something, still to this day, I sit there and look at it and I go, uh, and I, I choose the character that I would play. It's usually like the friend or like, you know what I mean? A little guy or a small part or something like that. I never even envision myself being the star because I go, well, this person's in shape. I'm not in shape. Guys, that don't matter. That don't matter because that guy happened to be in shape and they casted him, but they didn't know what they were looking for before they casted him. Not every part requires you to be a big buff dude or a fucking supermodel chick. So even when I was fantasizing, I wasn't the star of the show. So I, you need to start fantasizing. I need to start fan, even in your fantasies, speak positivity, think positivity. Your mind is a powerful thing. It's as, as powerful as your tongue, if not, more powerful all right and that's the message today everything's good you are good you're going to be get better and if you're not good say that you're going to get better you're going to grow i'm going to learn from this mistake i'm going to learn from that joke not working and making it better i'm going to learn from this song not being catchy enough or whatever it is that you do i'm going to learn how to make it better but it's all positive avoid depression avoid dark thoughts avoid suicide thoughts and i'm not preaching because i'm better than anybody i have them that's why i'm saying it and i've been there and i'm saying think positively and you'll never know what the universe is going to throw at you and that, that's the message and i hope that it helps you guys going into this week have a wonderful fantastic fucking week i'll see you guys later my name is augustino zoida and listen here's what i got going for you so you got dallas texas july 28th through the 31st and then I'm in San Francisco, August 5th and 6th with the Tinfoil Hat Crew, Sam Tripoli, Eddie Bravo. And then I had a Little Rock, Arkansas, August 31st through September 4th. And then I'm in uh, Omaha and Lincoln, Nebraska. It's uh, the, the September 15th and 16th. And then after that, I'm working on it. It's not finalized yet. It's almost finalized. But October 7th and 8th, I'm headed to Massachusetts. It looks like it's going to be in Worcester, Massachusetts, and then the other day in Foxborough. So um, those are all the dates I got coming for you. And that's pretty much my year, guys. I appreciate you. I would really appreciate you giving me a follow on YouTube. I can use some love over there. I would appreciate you following me on my social media, Twitter and Instagram, Facebook. I don't really give a fuck. But Twitter and Instagram, I can really use a follow over there. TikTok, whatever the fuck you got. I try to post it on TikTok. But that's the best way to keep in touch with me, Instagram, Twitter. and. Uh, and I, I could I could use the love and support, guys. I really appreciate you. It's at Augustino Zoida across the board. Use the uh, description details of this podcast for links to come see me live, where to get tickets, and how to find me on social media and follow me. I've been posting a lot of stand-up clips, a lot of uh, movie reviews, some cooking show stuff. I hope you guys enjoy what we have to offer here at Homeschooled Entertainment. I'm Augustino Zoida. Don't forget the only love can save the world. This is Homeschooled Podcast. See you guys next time. Peace.